Hey guys, what is going on? Redmashed here. It's been about four months since the Enchanted Grove was released onto Cards and Castles, but since then, there really hasn't been much going on in the game. Aside from one minor bug fix, there hasn't really been anything about balances, updates, new material, nothing like that. So it's caused a lot of concern for people. They don't know whether or not, uh, whether or not the game is dying or has been abandoned. In this video, I hope to bring up some discussion um, to clear up some of those things, I actually have been confronted on the matter. I've been asked whether I think the game is dying or whether, you know, people are leaving, like, you know, should I leave? Is the game abandoned? I'm going to handle what, you know, those rumors, I'm going to address them, what I think about them, and just some overall general discussion about where the game can go right now, like, what can be improved. Not, you know, not a guarantee, like, these will be fixed and whatnot, but it ties to the whole conversation about, um, you know, just what I think is going on for the game. So, let's get started. So, let's address the biggest question in the room. Is Cards and Castles dying? Is it being abandoned? And my answer to that is just flat out no. Um, with TEG, or, or the Enchanted Grove, it, it's been given a new, fresh life. Um, you know, in its previous, I guess, incarnation before the Enchanted Grove, if you asked me back then, if we were in this same situation, I might be more hesitant in giving a solid no. But being in the Enchanted Grove, being here where we are today, I will tell you that if you ask me, is CNC dying? I will tell you, hell no. It, it's it, it's not. And really, the main point I can give to that is the Discord. Uh, for those of you who are not part of you know the community in its very small regions, either Reddit or Discord. I would rather, you know, point out that Discord still has, um, well, not only, you know, a bunch of members who, of course, constantly talk, keeping the spirit of the game alive, um, but also developers are still there. Um, pro you know, most prominently, we still have bug reports being addressed, and that pretty much tells me that they still are in the game. They still want this game to... Uh, flourish to grow and they're not leaving anytime soon so uh, pretty much right now we'll get that out of the way it's not dying and I do not think it will die you know in these coming months it, it'll it won't it won't but that does beg the question of where is new content where are these different balances and despite of course like I said that one bug fix that we got more towards the middle, I mean, middle of these four months, I'm not entirely sure, I don't remember, I could usually check in the news, but, you know, gameplay. <laughs> um, so yeah, despite that one, like, minor, up, you know, fix and bugs, there hasn't been a lot in terms of, like, you know, again, new content or balance and whatnot. And, you know, based on my past experience with CNC, I know that they have a tendency to usually update like, you know, big updates like TEG around sort of uh, bi-seasonally. I'm not sure if that's the right term. But essentially, you know, like, you know, they, they might release something in summer and winter of a certain year and then go silent for the spring and fall to let that sort of gameplay simmer in and whatnot, which is fair. I mean, we've seen a winter release already. We've seen the Enchanted Grove. So I could probably expect to see something in the summer or something like that. Like big content though, like, you know, an expansion, tons of cards, tons of new mechanics, things like that. But we haven't really, um, you know, there, there is still room for a smaller patch and whatnot, but even then, uh, it hasn't been released. And usually, gameplay that's been around for as long as this sometimes in in this environment anyway does tend to get a little stale um you know seeing the same cards same actions even sometimes same players um can usually get repetitive for some people and i could see why people are concerned you know um they don't exactly know whether or not to stick with the game because well they haven't told us much and they really haven't said uh, much again aside from a few bug fixes via bug reports on discord they haven't really opened up all too much to us so uh, my hope is that right now they are working something in the background for the summer um hopefully something big uh maybe even to top this um this latest expansion I, i'm not entirely sure though um but again it's just something to consider um the fact 
that we are, or this game's history usually has a bi-seasonal release. And listen, you know, props to Vontre if he's kept um, a big expansion, sort of like TEG under the wrath for so long, and keeping that interest alive. Um, I know I'm, of course, I'm not planning on leaving the game anytime soon. I'm still invested. I'm still interested to see where things go from here. Um, but again, it does beg that question of what can be done at this point to improve the game, to create more of a stable player base, to do all these types of things. And that's why I did want to bring it uh, partly, uh, you know, the, the sort of the secondary reason why I wanted to bring this discussion to you guys. I want to open up um, my ideas and hopefully here are a couple of yours um, to see what can be improved inside the game or added uh, depending on what you are thinking of that can certainly be a um, addition to or tweaked again doesn't really matter it's we're all one big game here so um, you know things like that and I want to open up these this idea sharing uh, by going into the matchmaking system a little bit um, currently it's not bad in practice you play 10 places matches to get a deck on the board, then continue to play matches to rank up that deck. In theory, that sounds great. It gives uh, gives players a chance to use certain decks competitively and others not so competitively or, or to try out ideas. It sort of mixes the casuals and the ranks into one system without creating two separate modes. However, in execution, it can be argued that the system hasn't done all that good at it. Um, case in point, the obvious squash matches that some of the players may face. I know if you guys uh, might be sitting around different uh, ranking levels, you might find that you're facing off players who are considerably lower in skill and collection than you. And it's sort of weird for uh, them to, put, to be put in that situation because they don't know what to do sometimes. Uh, some players do grasp on, sometimes they do take what they have in their hands and you know they play it out to the end, which fair to them, they get the experience and they learn what's going on in sort of sometimes higher level play, which is props to them. Um, but it begs the question, you know, why did this match happen in the first place? What did the interface, you know, what did the matchmaking do exactly to prompt that oh yeah this match is, this match is fair this should happen and whatnot and along with that you know star gains aren't all that high either which is probably something that a lot of people don't like about the system you know you play a match after placement and you might only get five stars as opposed to maybe 10 to 15 to really show that you actually won a match and you're progressing somewhere um, so again there are flaws in that system that I would think need to be addressed uh, but that's not the only idea that I have of course when you're talking about change for one uh, or one of these types of games it always goes back to what kind of cards can be improved on now there have been a bunch of cards on people's minds since uh, the re initial release that hey we should be fixing these and I agree on some of them um, possibly dojo being too strong possibly uh, Eternal Darkness and Altar being too strong. That is, that's a fair point. So essentially, I wanted to give some of my ideas as to which what cards can be, you know, improved a bit uh, to show, you know, maybe. I mean, again, hopefully these do get addressed. Uh, the cards I'm mentioning, maybe my, not my exact changes, but again, bringing up card change discussions is always good. And I would like to hear some of your guys' feedback in the comment section as well. If you agree with some of my changes or, you know, maybe not. So, um, probably the first one I do want to look at first is obviously a big trap. I'm just going to, I'm not even like searching the filters. I'm just, all right, here it is. This is probably one of the biggest cards right now. Like, for example, Aijutsu. Um, Aijutsu, a trap card when the unit is attacked, gains four plus attack and first strike. That's... That on its own has been a crazy, crazy card lately. Without even the cycle power that it can produce thanks to Dojo, this is an incredibly dangerous card. When a unit is first attacked, it gains plus four. Think plus plus four. Why is it getting that much attack? And then on top of that, you're also getting a first strike. So essentially, Aijutsu is giving a unit a free Demon Hunter first strike on top of whatever their normal attack is to create this one powerful first strike. Which, 
I don't, I don't know. I, I think maybe the number can be lowered. Uh, I've discussed it with, with people before, and I'm thinking maybe a plus two is a good standpoint. I feel like giving it plus four in first strike just makes this card over the top powerful. Um, and I, you know, again, something that just needs to be looked at real quick, something to bring it down a bit there, something to just change it and make it so that, all right, well, um, it's not a seriously overpowering trap, but it's still a good trap to consider throwing into a deck here and there. Probably another big card I want to talk about is Eternal Darkness. Um, recently with the undead decks that are sprouting out and, you know, just taking over the meta more day by day, I feel like Eternal Darkness is probably a big target to receive sort of a, a, a minor tweak. And I mean a tweak in the sense that the dramatic entrance on this card is what really makes this card powerful. Um, of course, the dramatic entrance is that 3x3 three three square in the center of the board. So having an Eternal Darkness placed, uh, you know, to where it can basically spawn block the castle, I would say, is pretty devastating for a card to have. And seeing how it's the only card that can do this, I don't think that maybe it was designed... Uh, to purposely spawn lock your opponents. Something that maybe, I mean, people argue right now that uh, zombies as 2-2s two are too powerful and they need to be addressed overall. But I think tweaking this dramatic entrance off of the Eternal Darkness will really go a long way as to, you know, better contain uh, the zombie plays. Obviously, they give you that summoning space. You're never going to be spawn blocked if there is no dramatic entrance. Um, so, and... and yeah, it's three, uh, well, I would say, let's see, three by, yeah, so it would be nine two by two zombies, so giving you, it, it creates a pretty hard time, it's why people throw in swordsmen into their deck nowadays, that cleave can effectively combat eternal darkness, uh, if they have too many zombies spread out, um, a cleave can take out a majority of them with the swordsman taking little damage, so, Again, personally, just to wrap up on the Eternal Darkness and move on, I would say that the dramatic entrance needs to be removed rather than the zombies o overall receiving a nerf. Uh, that way, Eternal Darkness still retains its power of, you know, mass summoning zombies, but isn't overpowering to the point of, you know, spawn blocking and prematurely ending the game. Now, another card I want to bring up is actually not one that deserves a nerf. Uh, I actually do believe in that... When you buff other cards too, those cards also become better, more relevant and whatnot. So one of the first cards I would want to put a buff actually towards is Living Vines. Uh, we haven't really seen a lot of vines, um, not to mention, you know, like we haven't seen a lot of druids mostly in general. Um, but I feel like Vines is one of those cards that has some, you know, like it's it's an interesting concept in design, but I think it needs to be flushed out a little better. Um, probably one of you know, my thoughts on this card would instead of giving it that survival instinct, maybe do sort of a combo like the Dwarf Paladin has, except healing for, you know, well, healing for one, but again, combo means on attack and defense, it can get some health back. So that, of course, makes a heal more relevant. And on top of that, per perhaps buff it to a 4 5, making it sort of a slow, legitimate tank where it continues to heal. Um, that way it probably forces, you know, maybe two burns, a burn and an attack. Uh, the important thing now is that vines can be killed very quickly with a blue fire bolt, but I feel like if you buff it to 4 5, it can withstand that blue fire better, potentially get some more heals out of it. Uh, I sort of started on that one. And overall, it becomes a better card to use. And of course, brings some more relevancy to Druids, despite that, you know, they're not probably, they're not the best faction they could be. Uh, they do need more support, which, you know, we'll cover that a bit later. But I feel like Vines is a card that could potentially deserve a more tank-like um, appearance via a ability tweak and a stat buff. Another card I would personally like to see buffed would be the Bridge Troll. Um, now, obviously, Bridge Troll, his ability is pretty straightforward, and of course, straight simple for a man uh, or a creature of his stature. He's for two gold, you know, take away one gold from the opponent, and it's at a one two stat line. That is not bad. Except that Master Thief has the same stats for a lower cost, and of course, gets you the invest. Uh, personally, I don't believe Bridge Troll has a bad ability. 
um, but perhaps he can be morphed into a more impactful unit um, via a interesting but yet controversial tweak I had in mind. First of, all, uh, first of all, his cost would go up to about 3 gold, putting him in the contendership with cards like Dwarf Paladin. Actually, we'll just do a quick little 3 unit count, 3 gold unit count. Uh, cards like Arcanon, Bearhog, Behemothra, and so on and so forth. So he would get that sort of cost range. He would become a 2-3 in stat line to separate him from the Master Thief, putting him at, you know, well, yeah, 2-3. So, reasonable stats for cards uh, like him. Um, and I also think he should probably take away 2 gold, being a more impactful pirate unit to include in your deck. To pretty much cripple their gold for a full turn by making them, you know, you could force them to use a Medal of Bravery or, um, or maybe have to skip their turn. Uh, but it makes the bridge troll feel a lot more impactful when you're, you know, throwing him out or into a deck. Um, I, again, do feel like the bridge troll currently is just one of those cards that's just sitting there. And the fact that they got the same stats as a one gold unit really makes him feel a lot less than he really is. So, just to recap that change, an increase in cost, an increase in stat line to about 2-3, and to take away 2 gold rather than um, 1 gold. And it actually kind of puts it now thinking about it on the same place as Salahar Spitefish. Um, you could argue that may you know, maybe the Salahar can get changed as well. But essentially, I think that's a more impactful change. We're having an initiative of 2 gold, 2, 3 for 3 gold. And you could probably argue that the Spitefish can go into a more different role. Sort of maybe like the Manfishes currently. It's maybe have some sort of interesting detonate power or effect. Um, but... Yeah, I would like to see Bridge Troll essentially make that sort of change and sort of branch out from his current position. And of course, let me know your guys' thoughts on those improvements. I, I know I missed a whole lot that more people have been talking about. Uh, War Party, Alter, Dojo, just to name a few of those cards. Um, if you have ideas for those, uh, again, that's what I want to open this video up for, for some discussion. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below um, for improvement. If you had a certain idea or whatnot, I would you know, love to hear it. But moving on is sort of a final piece that I think should be uh, added into the game to throw out an improvement. Um, potentially a, well, more of a gameplay side than a... Um, overall game side. I will say that for the game side, personally, I would like to see a more friendly, you know, or casual based mode. Um, but anyway, m maybe for another time on that. But I would like to maybe shift over into a more gameplay mechanical sense that I would like to see added into the game. And that's sort of a graveyard. Um, now, I know we don't, you know, of course you don't have the graveyard, or a graveyard in this game, and once a card is destroyed, it is permanently gone. But I would think a graveyard would be quite interesting to add into this game. Now, it doesn't have to have a huge impact, of course. It can only be, you know, granted to maybe one or two current cards, maybe add in a new card or tweak some existing ones to focus on the graveyard. But I think having that ability to just create some nice sort of from the dead effects. I mean, we have reanimate, so there is certainly a counter in the game right now to keep track of maybe how many units you lost in a certain turn. And I feel like that can be improved a bit uh, or fleshed out more to be like a more of a you know graveyard sense. It takes it takes into account what maybe card you've lost and has it a bit like necromancer of initiate like you know or yeah you you could probably tweak uh, necromancer. On his, you know, or maybe like his last will, or, um, I mean, I wouldn't say, in it. probably, yeah, a last will would, might do better for him, but potentially, like, a last will for the Necromancer was, you know, um, summon a random unit for the great. I mean, I would like to say initiative, but personally, that would be a very strong Mystic Journey deck if it had initiative, but maybe, like, a last will of, um, summoning a random unit or from either player or your graveyard, something along the lines of utilizing that graveyard. And of course, that does leave the door open for some new cards uh, to flesh out that graveyard even further, adding a card back to your hand, adding from the opponent's graveyard. There are some possibilities that can be done with that, and I would like to personally see that. Um, and of course, on the topic of new cards as well, um, 
there hasn't been a whole lot recently for, you know, obviously that's why I haven't really made, that's why I'm kind of making this video. There hasn't been a lot of new card action. But I would definitely like to see one of, you know, a new card or two into the game and obviously not to, you know, hark on that graveyard ability even further, but you can certainly use them in tangent with the graveyard or you could potentially use new cards to flush out that druid faction. That new Druid faction, I might add. Uh, we haven't really seen a whole lot of things going on with Druids. They are, though, a new faction, so potentially um, a card or two supporting the Druids can give them more depth and more identity. Something that I, excuse me, previously stated in my um, my Druid faction review video. Um, so that's really all I have in terms of. Um, you know, adding more things gameplay-wise. Obviously, you can make a ton of ideas and new cards, and again, on the topic of, you know, well, not on the topic of, but going along with card improvement and whatnot, I think that a good topic in the comments section to bring up as well is that what kind of new cards do you think would fit into this current game? You know, where it is right now, how can it shake up uh, ladder competition, maybe what's the theme behind it, faction-wise. You know, I'd like to spitball some ideas, and of course, leave me some in the comment section below. There has been, of course, you know, very detailed posts over on Reddit, and some chats in Discord about new cards, and what they could do, potentially. Um, but, again, we'd like to open that up to you guys, and hear your thoughts relating to any sort of new cards. I feel like adding one would certainly shake up the ladder, and it certainly give attention uh, to the game right now, where the gameplay is getting a bit stale, a new card with the uh, you know an ability such as maybe accessing a graveyard or fleshing out the druid faction, giving them more depth, or and adding like a new type of deck in the meta. Re regardless, a new card always tends to sometimes shake things up. So adding a new card would be very beneficial to the game in this sort of period of uh, I guess quietness, you could say. So to put it sweetly, of course, Cars and Castles isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It has been quiet here recently, I'm well aware of that, but I think that hopefully something big is in the making, whether that be an interesting summer balance shakeup or a new expansion with a drop, you know, 10 new cards on us perhaps. Well, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but I will be hopeful for the future, and I hope you guys are as well. Uh, like I said, game is not dying, and I feel like potentially uh potentially it has the ability to take uh you know to reach new areas that weren't thought possible due to the sort of invigorated life from the enchanted grove despite of course the, the minor staleness of gameplay i do think that um even the slightest of activity the slightest change will bring up some you know attention that i think the game needs right about now um so yeah with that being said um if you guys did enjoy the video Please like it and share with your friends. And of course, comment down below. I told you guys to, you know, fill up that comment section a lot with card ideas, um, thoughts on improvements, uh, you, you know, just overall your thoughts. I can't even remember all the thoughts I gave you to write down in the comment section below. But I do hope that I will see you guys down there to share ideas and to talk about maybe your, your thoughts overall on the state of the game. And, you know, hopefully we can, well, I don't want to, then you I don't know where I'm trailing off to in thought. There. I'm just I'm just trailing off in thought. <laughs> um, and if you are new to the channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. You share your support. Help us grow the channel all by clicking that subscribe button at no cost to you whatsoever. But that being said, guys, until next time, stay gaming.